Welcome. Thank you very much for choosing to spend a few minutes uh, watching this presentation. I really appreciate your time. I know there's a lot of things online and a lot of uh, you know ways that you can get information, and I appreciate you taking a few minutes to uh, watch this. My name is Kathleen Carr. I own a company called The Growing Scene, and today I'm going to be discussing successfully growing vegetables on your patio. Um, I teach a a wide variety of different classes related to gardening, whether it's, you know, protecting your plants from rabbits or native plants or, um, you know, easy to maintain perennial flowers. Um, the, this is the one topic, though, that I really, really enjoy speaking about um, because it's a topic that I feel like I um, know the most about. <laughs> um, I have been um, growing vegetables, honestly, for uh, for many decades, probably 35 years or, or a little bit longer than that. Um, I, I know I'm sure there's many of you watching that may have been growing vegetables for longer than that even. Um, but this is one topic that's really close to my heart, and I appreciate you, you kind of tuning in. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, I can't hear from you what you what you're hoping to learn tonight um but i did want to um, give you the opportunity if there's something that i have don't cover during this presentation um you know one if there's a particular reason why you tuned in and it's not talked about please feel free to reach out to me my contact information was in the previous slide i will do whatever research is necessary and get that information back to you um so to kind of i don't know make it personalize this presentation um, a little bit and just give you a little bit more perspective as I kind of go through the next half an hour or so what um, where kind of my mindset comes from. Um, it comes from a decision um, that was made by this gentleman here on the top. Um, when I was about 13 years or old or so, um, my, this is my grandfather, Elmer Britton. Um, he made the decision that um, every 13 year old um, needs to spend her summers um, as the picture um, below shows in a cornfield. Um, he um, did not, my mom, both of my parents worked. He did not want me um, spending my summers at home by myself. He wanted, he felt very strongly that I needed to, you know, to be out and to be active and to be working. Um, so he opened um, a, a company, actually, I opened a company with my stepbrothers. It was called Harmony Vegetable Market. Um, he gave us the land um, and really kind of mentored us along with my mom and my stepfather. Um, they really mentored us on how to grow vegetables. <laughs> so I spent, you know, kind of the, you know, the critical 13 to about 17 years old or so. Um, you know, and my, my summer days would include uh, hoeing all the vegetables in the morning and then by about noon we'd set up the produce stand and sell the rest of the afternoon and I will always say I worked much much harder then than I will ever work now um, so I, I really do thank my grandfather and honor him for the decision to um, you know for us to to grow vegetables we had about five acres I would say in vegetables um, and I really appreciate appreciate the fact that um, he had that foresight and knew how important it would be um, during those critical summers for us to stay busy and to work hard. Um, so to move on a little bit um, kind of in the presentation, um, I would say if you're consider considering growing vegetables in containers this summer, I would ask yourself just a couple of questions before you um, go out and either purchase the seeds or the actual plants. And here's a couple of questions to, to consider asking. Um, number one, what vegetables do I really like? Um, I think we're all a little bit more excited <laughs> about growing things that we like, such as, uh, you know, maybe grape tomatoes or um, fresh lettuce, uh, you know, then growing things that we don't like, I don't know, like beets or cilantro or something like that. Um, number two, what vegetables do you use frequently when cooking? What would it be so nice if you could just, you know, kind of open the patio door and walk out the sledding glass door and, you know, pick some fresh radishes or, you know, something like that, or cut some basil um, instead of always having to go over to the store, especially in these days when it's, um, you know, you have to really think about, you know, think about going out and whether or not you want to go out to the store. It'd be so, um, so much nicer just to have those vegetables available to you. Number three, what vegetables would you like to use more? Um, I think obviously we're um, always apt to 
um, to eat what we have on hand. <laughs> so is there something that you would um, really wish that you would eat more kale? Well, then, you know, perhaps the, this is the summer to, to start growing your own kale. Um, number four, what vegetables are easily grown? Um, we, especially if this is something that is new to you, uh, I would start out with some, you know, really easy things like uh, lettuce seeds um, as opposed to if you were to plant say lettuce seeds and green pepper seeds um, lettuce is so much more easier to grow and germinates faster and re is ready to harvest faster um, you may want to kind of skew yourselves to um, areas where you would have the most success and then number five on um, what vegetables grow best in containers there are some vegetables that don't grow well in containers um, so, you know, again, if you're limited to container gardening, just kind of set those vegetables aside. Um, and then number six, where do you plan on placing the container? In most instances, you're really going to need to um, place the container in as much sun as possible. And we'll get into some of those details in a little bit. Um, number seven, I, I'm sorry, number six again, I apologize. Um, how much do I want to grow? Um, uh, I guess maybe a common example would be um, zucchini. Um, one plant will give you loads and loads of zucchini. So again, before you start, you know, kind of making those purchases, really plan everything out um, and figure out exactly you know, how many tomato plants do you want, how many pepper plants, and so on. Um, number seven, when do I want to harvest the vegetables? Um, if you're going to be gone for, say, you know, a portion of the summer, would it be important to plant things that germinate faster and quicker so that they're ready, you know, before you have to leave? Um, number eight, uh, do I intend on, on preserving these vegetables? If uh, And examples of that would be um, by preserving, or are you going to be freezing any extra, maybe dehydrating things, canning things, um, drying, you know, in the um, example of herbs, will you be drying some of the herbs? Um, so, so if you plant... Um, is, you know, say if you were to plant five tomato, tomato plants and all of a sudden in mid-August you have a bushel full of tomatoes, is that okay because you're prepared to preserve them? Um, and then number nine, what am I going to do with these vegetables? Um, so are you going to just you know, eat them? Are you going to share them with neighbors, with friends, with relatives? Um, use them in cooking? Just, you know, kind of think ahead and think, you know, why am I doing this? What What's going to happen in the, you know, in the end when these are ready to harvest? So these are some um, just, you know, great kind of general examples of um, vegetables that are grown in container. Um, to the left, this looks more um, like a mix of herbs. Um, there's in that one container, I bet there's about like nine different plants that so they really get them packed in. And then back here again, it's just another um, you know, great round container of vegetables. Um, a few more containers, um, believe it or this is a container of carrots, believe it or not, you can grow carrots in a container. Um, and then of course the lovely grape or cherry tomatoes. And then down here, there's some eggplant actually growing in the container. Um, and then this is an example of herbs um, that are in a strawberry pot. Um, and again, you can see that they've used what, um, you know, maybe in years past stra strawberries would have been grown, growing in this terracotta. Um, container. In this example, there's a variety of different herbs. Uh, and then lettuce. Uh, as I mentioned in, in the introduction, lettuce is super easy to grow um, in a container. And this is an example of one container that's got three different types of lettuce already, you know, all ready to be harvested. Uh, so these are, um, I think we're all probably aware of the benefits of vegetables, um, but these are some other things to consider um, if you're kind of debating, should I grow my own vegetables, should I not? Um, I'm not going to read all through them, um, but I'll just emphasize a couple. Um, growing your own vegetables allows you an immediate source of really fresh and the most nutritious fruits and vegetables. You also get exercise just going out there. Um, planting, maintaining, and then harvesting the vegetables. Also, gardening is a just phenomenal natural stress reliever, and I think we all we all need a little bit of stress relief these days. Um, it will also um, growing your own fruits and vegetables also reduces your exposure to pesticides, which I think is a is an important consideration. Um, I ideally this is what our dinner plate's going to look like. <laughs> I don't know that we're all kind of living up to that um, at times, um, but that's you know ideally if we can kind of take it a chunk of that um, portion of the plate for our own homegrown vegetables. It's wonderful. 
And so to kind of get into um, the specifics, we'll start out with tomatoes. Um, tomatoes are, um, I wouldn't say they're easy to grow in a container, but they certainly can be grown in a container. Um, and as long as you pay attention to um, the placement of the container and then how you maintain it, they should do really well. Um, what I met with about the placement of the um, container is tomatoes um, need, I, I would say, at least five hours of sun, hopefully six hours of sun, really need to get them into a, a full sun situation. Um, I would also um, choose a relatively large pot. I know the pot in, in this picture is probably only six to eight inches wide. Um, they're growing, it looks like cherry tomatoes in them. I'd try to, you know, to get a container that's, I would say, at least 15 inches tall, 15 inches wide. Um, and then there's a note here about the type of tomato um, that I would consider uh, consider recommending. It's a dwarf um, variety of determinate type. Um, there's two different types of tomatoes, indeterminate and determinate for um, a container, you want one that's determinate, it's going to give you a higher yield because it's a little bit more compact and has a lot more fruit on it. Um, be green beans. Um, there are um, bush and vine type beans. Um, I, would I would say choose a bush type um, bean for a container. Um, although certainly if you want to try climbing, to, um, climbing beans, you just have to give it that kind of the trellis support that it would need. Um, beans are like tomatoes. They really need a full sun um, situation and a pretty deep pot, at least I would say 12 to 15 inches deep. Um, they are very, very productive. You can see in this picture, <laughs> there's a ton of beans and just a couple of, a couple of uh, plants. Uh, moving on to lettuce. Um, lettuce is one of my favorite things to grow in a container. Um, I know that um, obviously flowers and containers are absolutely gorgeous and I mean, you get a lot of, of good color. Well, I, I would honestly say that this bowl of lettuce is incredibly colorful and pretty darn attractive for a um, container of vegetables. Uh, what you might want to do is just get a, um, you know, kind of a shallow um, round container. The container doesn't have to be that deep. It can just, you know, be six to eight inches deep. Um, I would say probably 10 inches wide. Um, Fill it with topsoil, and we'll get into the topsoil in a, in a few minutes. Um, and then, just honestly, it's just as um, it's just as easy as sprinkling a few lettuce seeds on top. Cover it with a little bit more topsoil, keep it moist, and you should have lettuce. I would say within about 28 days or so, you can start harvesting that lettuce. Um, the one thing that I would do with lettuce is harvest it on a pretty regular basis. Um, because if you let it grow too tall, it's going to do what it's called bolting. It's going to bolt and then it's not going to be good anymore. So lettuce, when it's ready to eat, just you know, kind of get that scissors out there and, you know, and continue to harvest it on a regular basis. Um, and then it will continue to produce new leaves of lettuce for you. Um, peppers and chilies, um, absolutely, you can do those in containers. Um, again, they, they need a lot of sun. They need some warm weather. Um, everything that we've about everything that we've talked about so far, um, I would definitely um, I would definitely start peppers by with an actual plant or a starter plant. Um, I would probably do that for tomatoes as well. Um, lettuce you can easily start by seed, um, but for the tom tomatoes and the peppers, by plants and plant them, um, and then again just wait until um, until it seems like the weather is pretty warm. Peppers can get frosted very easily, um, so wait until kind of the mid to the end of May um, when the chance of frost has passed. Um, radishes. Um, radishes I would kind of group into that lettuce category. Very, very easy to grow. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, kind of filling up a, a, a you know, medium-sized pot um, with some seeds, cover them lightly with some soil, and just keep them pretty well watered. With radishes, honestly, they can be ready to harvest in about 21 days or so. And all of that information will be on, if you would buy a seed packet, um, all of that information will be on the seed packet. It'll tell you exactly how to, how to plant them, uh, how many days till germination, and how many days to harvest. There's an amazing amount of information on these seed packets. A spinach, um, again, that would be more towards lettuce, um, that um, it's 
very easy to grow. Spinach can take a little bit of shade, which is nice though. A lot of the vegetables we've talked about so far are really full sun. This is, I would say, a shady, um, a sh little bit of a shadier spot. Um, and then just continue to harvest that whenever the leaves get generally about four inches um, high, then you can just kind of take a scissors out there and continue to harvest them throughout the summer. Peas. Um, I don't often think of peas as being grown in a container, but they certainly can. Um, though like beans, you're going to want to um, consider more of a bush type pea um, or a dwarf variety. Put it in full sun and just keep that um, container pretty consistently moist throughout the, um, throughout the growing season. Carrots, um, as we saw in one of the introductory slides, you can grow carrots in the ground. Um, I'm sorry, in a container. They're not always grown in the gar ground. Um, there are dwarf varieties that are specifically suited for containers, and that's one thing that I would take a look at. Um, carrots do need a lot of water, though. So, you know, especially when they're grown in a container, that soil has a tendency to dry out pretty quickly. Um, you're going to want to check them at least once a day, maybe even twice a day to make sure that you're giving those carrots a lot of water so that they can really um, grow till they're full of potential. Um, I have seen carrots um, kind of dry out and crack pretty easily as they're grown if they're not kept, um, being kept consistently moist. Cucumbers. Um, this is a plant that you probably, as the picture shows, you probably want to um, plant and have some sort of support for the cucumbers to grow up on as they're, um, you know, as they're being pollinated and producing fruit. Um, it does take a little bit longer um, than some of the other things that we've talked about to actually get to the point of harvest. Um, but um, as long as you, um, you know, take care of the plant as it's growing, as it's growing, um, making sure that it's pollinated as much as you you know, that's not always in our control, but um, hopefully they'll, the flowers will be pollinated and they will produce a nice size fruit for you. Eggplant. Um, so I picked the, uh, this picture just because it was in a very unique <laughs> looking eggplant. They're obviously much more elongated than the typical eggplant that we're used to. Um, but um, egg, I think eggplants are, uh, I know eggplants are a very easy uh, plant to grow or vegetable to grow. Um, they do best, they're kind of like peppers, they do best kind of in the heat of the summer. They're one of the latter vegetables that are harvested. Um, usually things like the radish, the um, lettuce, and um, the zucchini, which we'll get to in a couple of slides, are more of the, the earlier um, plant, the earlier vegetables that are available. Um, the tomatoes and the eggplant come, take a little bit longer throughout the summer. Um, they are in the um, tomato family, though, um, and know that they like a lot of nutrients. They like fertilizer. Um, the term would be that they're a heavy feeder. Um, so as you're watering these, I would make sure to feed them with a fertilizer that's appropriate for vegetables. Um, zucchinis. <laughs> there's um, one zucchini plant. Can uh, you can see in this picture? I think there's probably about five zucchini on one plant. Um, it seems like once you start harvesting zucchini, there's going to be zucchini every day for a couple of weeks. Um, very very easy to grow. Um, will give you a bountiful harvest. Um, some of the winter squashes. Um, you know, it would be like acorn squash or butternut, um, even some pumpkins. Um, they are really pretty difficult to grow in a container just because they sprawl out so much. Zucchinis are a pretty, um, you know, they kind of stay in one place and you can see all the fruit comes from the crown of that plant. Um, so they're, they lend themselves of all the squash, uh, members of the squash family, zucchini are the ones that lend themselves a little bit more easily to growing in container. Swiss chard. Um, we talked about how beautiful um, containers of flowers can be, and definitely Swiss chard falls into that with a really kind of colorful um, rib on the plant. Um, kale and Swiss chard can both be grown um, in a container. Um, I would just make sure to kind of space out the plants because they can get pretty thick stalks. 
Um, it also is a more of a cool or um, cool weather crop. So typically those would be grown either really early in the spring, but usually with Swiss chard, they're more of a fall crop. Kale, um, also a little bit more of a fall crop. It's a cool weather crop. Um, typically these would be, you know, planted more like, I would say early to mid-September through um, October and then into November. Um, it can take the summer sun, but it's really more suited towards the fall. Mustard greens. <laughs> I'm kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, um, a little bit more towards that, you know, the midsummer crop, um, really easy to grow, just like lettuce and radishes that we've talked about. Usually these would be planted uh, by seed. Garlic, <laughs> um, really um, phenomenal uh, plant with great health benefits. Um, I would it's a little bit hard to find the garlic bulbs. They're kind of like uh, potato bulbs, <laughs> a little bit potatoes. It's a little bit seed potatoes, I should say. It's a little bit hard to find those. Um, typically, though, you'd want to plant the container that's at least about eight inches deep. You'd want to leave about six inches between each garlic clove as you're um, planting them. Um, and then uh, I would say probably give them about 45 days before they're ready to harvest. Rhubarb. Um, so of all the things we've talked about so far, rhubarb is the one that is a perennial. It will continue to grow back from year to year. Uh, you can grow it in a container. Usually it's grown in the guard, uh, in the ground just because of, you know, just because it's perennial in nature. Um, if it's grown in a container, I'm not positive that would make it through our winter. It would kind of depend on whether where you put the container and if it was a little bit protected throughout the winter. Um, but generally the rhubarb will come back from year to year. Um, so those are some vegetables that are pretty easily grown in containers. Um, this is, you know, maybe taking a little bit of a step back Then you know, you've, you've kind of thought about what you're going to eat and you've planned your garden and, you know, you've, um, kind of highlighted, um, the, the plants and, you know, the quantities that you want to plant. Um, this is, uh, taking a look at, okay, you know, I, I know that I want to grow 10 vegetables and I need 10 different containers and taking a look at what are kind of the pros and cons of different containers. Um, I guess I would lean a little bit um, more towards um, choosing a plastic pot rather than a clay pot just because the plastic pots are going to retain moisture. Although I certainly understand that clay pots are, um, are probably a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, you can certainly choose clay pots, just know that they're going to um, drought a little bit faster and you might need to be watering them a, more frequently. Um, I also would consider hanging baskets, especially for things like strawberries or cherry tomatoes. Um, it's just great to get some height sometimes in your garden um, and then just having them uh, at eye level <laughs> makes it that, all that more appealing. Um, generally every year we'll have a a hanging basket of strawberries in our greenhouse and I just love kind of walking out there for a mid-morning snack. <laughs> um, I would encourage you to not plant vegetables in any gardens, uh, any of, in any containers uh, that are made out of treated wood. Um, obviously some of those chemicals um, have the potential that they could be absorbed into the soil and we want to avoid that. Um, a little bit more information. I'm not again. I'm not going to get into all of this, but a little bit more information in general. A larger size pot is a little bit bigger than a smaller size pot, just to allow for um, the potting soil and the nutrients and the moisture that is needed by the root system. Um, there is a um, kind of a potting system. It's called Earth Box. Um, that is manufactured. Was designed and manufactured specifically for growing. Um, vegetables in containers. If that's something that you're interested in, I'd probably suggest um, that you research that. Again, it's called Earth Box. Um, it has, um, it's a vegetable container growing system that has kind of a false bottom on the bottom of the container. Um, it allows drainage. It has a kind of a staking system within the Earth Box and um, has its own watering system. So it's kind of an all inclusive way to grow vegetables. Um, and then if you don't do that, which obviously you do not have to, you can grow vegetables in a wide variety of different containers. Um, but a couple of the things that we talked about, like peas and beans, um, 
cucumbers. They would do a little bit better with some support. I would consider using like a tomato cage or, you know, some sort of wire um, to give uh, your vegetables that need that support, something, you know, to vine up on, um, give them that support when you plant them. Um, potting soil, um, I always say buy the best potting soil that you can afford. Um, you really you would just want to look for something that says it's specifically for container gardening. Um, you could also make your own um, if you wanted to mix some potting soil with some peat moss and vermiculite, perlite, some sand, just kind of mix it all together and um, fill the containers. Um, if possible, you probably also want to add about an inch of coarse gravel to the bottom of the containers just to improve drainage. And then planting. Um, the question always comes up, you know, do I have to put a new potting soil in my containers um, all year? I would say in an ideal world, yes, you do. <laughs> it, it will be better for the plants in the long run. The potting soil is really what feeds the plants, um, what supports the root system for the next couple of months. So ideally start with new potting soil. Sometimes that's not always possible depending on the, you know, if you have huge containers, it might not be practical. But if possible, start with fresh potting soil every year. Um, there's a little bit more information, just, you know, kind of moisten that potting soil, uh, fill up the container, moisten the potting soil a little bit. Um, and then making sure that if you need to um, put the container on a saucer um, as you're getting ready to plant. Um, what I always do is kind of fill that container up um, to about at a, probably about five inches below the top of the container. Um, invert the vegetable plants, take them out of the container, put them on top of the potting soil, and then backfill with some additional potting soil. Um, there's also something... Um, called kind of the, the walk of life or it's where you really kind of general um, gently just kind of press down on the edges of the soil of the vegetable to make sure you have that good root contact um, or between the vegetable roots and then the new potting soil. Make sure to water thoroughly after you plant um, and then just make sure to um, pretty consistently keep um, water and keep that top soil the potting soil moist as the plant is growing. Um, just a really important note, too much water can kill a plant just as quickly as I would say actually more quickly than underwatering. So you're really going to want, want to watch the watering throughout the growing season. Um, maintaining, um, this is again just kind of what I said, just make sure that you water appropriately. Um, inspecting uh, for insects and diseases, usually vegetables and ins uh, vegetables in containers are a little bit less susceptible to insects and diseases, but they certainly can um, can get them. Uh, just make sure that when you're watering or even you know when you're out harvesting, inspect for pests and diseases. If you um, have any problems, you may want to reach out to say the extension service or local garden center to try to get some um, information on what it is. And then certainly if you choose to treat your vegetables for an insect or a disease, you absolutely must make sure that whatever you're using to treat um, is appropriate to be used on edible plants. Um, fertilizing, um, I've mentioned that a couple of the plants are really heavy fertilizing, heavy feeders. Um, you would want to make sure to fertilize on a regular basis throughout the growing season. Um, I would say, you know, of course, you know, look at the look at the directions of whatever you're using, but I would say you're probably going to look at uh, fertilizing about every third time you water. Um, here's some examples of um, fertilizers that you can use. Um, the one on the bottom left is called Osmocote. I love using that when I'm initially planting because it's a slow release fertilizer. And once you use Osmocote, um, actually that's going to continue to release fertilizer into the soil throughout the growing season. Um, the top right um, would, mir would be Miracle Grow. Um, that's a water soluble fertilizer. So as I'd said, if you're you know for, if you're watering a about every third time you water, um, if you're only using Miracle Grow, I would consider that. Um, and then there's also in the bottom right um, a picture of Dr. Earth. Um, it's just a kind of a general, um, all-purpose, great fertilizer. Um, it is an organic fertilizer, and I think that's especially appropriate to 
um, consider using on edible plants. Uh, harvesting, the fun part <laughs> after you've uh, done all the, you know, the research and the planting and the watering and the maintaining. Now, now it's the fun part. Now you can actually kind of literally eat the fruits of your labor. <laughs> um, so as I talked about a little bit with lettuce, um, you don't want to let it bolt. You really need to um, kind of cut that on a regular basis. So generally, um, as fruit and vegetables are developing, you're really going to want to um, be cognizant and start harvesting as soon as it's ready. Don't let the um, like don't let your zucchini get too big. That'd probably be the most common <laughs> example. Don't let the zucchini get too big. Don't let the lettuce bowl. Don't let the um, the tomatoes kind of rot on the vine. Really start um, harvesting on a regular basis. Um, some uh, vegetables or herbs could be moved indoors. Um, just be a little bit careful and do that kind of gradually. Um, and make sure that you're not um, you're not kind of shocking them by not acclim um, acclimating them to the indoors, um, and then also make sure to inspect them for insects um, before you move them indoors and treat if if needed. Uh, here is uh, just a graphic. I apologize; it's a little bit um, fuzzy. Um, but here's a graphic of some things, some herbs that you can grow pretty easily in containers and can grow um, in indoors as well. Uh, and then we, um, some more information about how many plants per container. I know I kind of just kind of glossed over that, uh, but we had talked about uh, growing cucumbers. Really, it's one plant per one gallon pot, and there's some specific varieties that you may want to consider. Um, I had mentioned for tomatoes, um, making sure to, term, uh, to consider choosing a terminate dwarf variety. Here's some specific varieties like Early Girl, Sweet Sweet 100, Tiny Tim. Those are some great tomato varieties that do well in containers. Uh, there's some also some examples of Blue Lake is a great bush bean that I've grown in tomato in uh, containers. Um, then this is lots of very detailed information about whether or not you would have like a greater chance of success of using, um, starting with an actual plant. And in here in this description, I'm calling them transplants or whether you can grow from seed. Um, so we'll um, give the, I mentioned lettuce many times. Um, lettuce is generally grown by seed. Um, it talks about transplants here. Um, honestly, I think seed is super easy. <laughs> I would do seed and not waste your money and buying an actual plant. Um, but tomatoes, on exa um, for example, are really pretty darn difficult to grow by seed, and you actually actually have to start them indoors probably back in February. So in that case, I would buy a plant. Um, so some some specific directions as to how many seeds or how many transplants per container. Um, I apologize that I cannot answer your questions. I'm so sorry. Um, I can't answer your questions in this format, but certainly uh, if you do have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me, call me. My company information was towards the beginning of this video. Um, I would be happy to help you, um, and I wish you happy gardening. Have a wonderful rest of your day.